So this is really funny. So a couple days ago, I recorded a video uh, responding to um, <clears throat> a couple of like attempts at insulting me. Um, and I, was, I wasn't sure if I wanted to post it. There was a few things I didn't like about it, but, but um, <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to now. And so I'm gonna post it at the end of this video. Basically, this is a tweet that just happened today about why somebody won't talk to me. As you see, this brother here says, that the Rutland fellow is just building a platform. He should do it on his own steam. Don't try to ride coattails. This is a very cowardly way to say, I don't want to talk to him. Um, <laughs> anyway, my video actually responded to this exact kind of attempt at insulting me two days or three days before it even happened. But anyway, enjoy, the, enjoy this video. So I was thinking about, um, <laughs> well, what I was initially thinking about was how um, people will attempt to insult me and how it, you know, the ways that people attempt to insult you actually tell you more about them than it does about yourself. Um, and one of the ways I was thinking of was how people like to say that I'm just trying to build a platform. And, um, you know, I don't have that many people who try to insult me, but um, the ones that do tend to say stuff like that. You're just trying to build a platform. And what's so stupid about that is, building a platform isn't an insult like yes i am trying to build a platform i think i'm right i think my ideas are better than the popular ideas and so i want my ideas to be given a bigger platform than what's popular right now so yeah of course i'm trying to build a platform that's not an insult um but if i was just trying to build a platform and the content didn't matter to me i would not be doing what i'm doing i would be the most incompetent person ever if i was doing what i'm doing i used to have connections with the evangelical intelligentsia you know the soy latte drinking folks i used to have connections with gospel coalition and i used to write for blogs that had a lot more traction than mine does now um but i've been blacklisted from all of that stuff because i do not have the approved minority opinion and so if I was just trying to build a platform, you would think that I would have invested my time and energy into doing what everybody else was doing in the evangelical intelligentsia. But though I am trying to build a platform, the platform is not what's important to me. It's the ideas that are important. And so I'll always be smaller than the Gospel Coalition, most likely, because um, you know, obviously I'm, the quality is not as high, but also the content is not approved. It's not the improved evangelical intelligentsia opinion. So I find that yeah, anyone who thinks anyone who thinks that's an insult to tell me I'm just trying to build a platform, um, it actually works to encourage me because it kind of tells me that you are fearful that I will build the platform. I don't think I've made it yet. You know, I have 1,300 subscribers on YouTube, right? Um, so I don't think I've built a big enough platform yet. But every time I hear that criticism, it actually encourages me. It makes me feel like, yeah, maybe I am having an impact here. So keep it up, guys. I will do my best to have an even bigger platform tomorrow than I do today. Anyway, I was thinking about white supremacy, right? And how social justice warriors oftentimes believe white supremacist ideas. And it's this idea of these white knights, right? So what you'll get is social justice warriors and they think that they are being so courageous defending the rights of the women and the minority classes and things like that. And so they, they look really good to people because they supposedly care about minorities and they this and that, blah, blah, blah. But what ends up happening is they end up spouting a lot of white supremacist ideas accidentally. Because for them, it's not really about treating people fairly. It's about looking like they're treating people fairly. And so here's an example that I'll, I often bring up. Matt Chandler, one of his MLK 50 speech, um, one of the worst parts of his speech was this whole idea about his affirmative action hiring practices. He really wants to hire a black campus pastor, right? And what he said was that he would hire a black uh, campus pastor ahead of a white campus pastor, even if he was less qualified, even if he wasn't as good, just for the sake of diversity, because that's important to him. And to a lot of people, that looks really good. And he got a lot of applause for it. And that's got the optics of someone who actually cares about minorities. But when you take a step back and think about what he's saying, listen to this. What he's saying is, these minorities, these blacks, these Latinos, they need a little extra help from us white people. 
Nothing's ever going to get done for them unless we lower that bar, give them a little extra credit, and we help them out. The, a black person can't empower themselves. They need to wait from a white person on high to grant the privilege to them, to grant the power to them. And unless we do something about it, nothing's ever going to change, folks. Remember in his speech, he said, we've got to say something. He was so emotional about that. Listen, Puerto Ricans don't need white people's help. We can empower ourselves. We can grab whatever we want to grab ourselves, whatever power, whatever privilege, whatever positions. We have the capability to do that. We don't need white people's help. We don't need you to lower the bar for us. And anyone who thinks that we need to lower the bar for Puerto Ricans or blacks in order for them to have the same opportunities is believing, accidentally, a white supremacist idea. That unless white people act Black people aren't going to be able to have the privilege that they deserve. That's a white supremacist idea. Now, I'm not saying that he knows that's a white supremacist idea and he's purposely trying to uh, put himself in a superior position. I'm not saying that. But he is putting himself in a superior position. For him to pretend like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a campus pastor. I'm going to purposely look for a black guy because we all know that if I don't do anything intentionally about it, there's no way a black person would be qualified. Let's... Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Another, another example of this would be uh, how people like to lament how uh, the lack of diversity in churches uh, in the United States. And they would say, well, there's black churches and white churches and there's no diversity. There's not enough diversity anyway. And I don't buy that narrative, by the way. I, I don't really think that that's something that um, is a rampant problem. I don't even think, biblically speaking, you could say it even is a problem at all. But anyway, let's just say I did grant it for a second. Oftentimes what you'll hear is someone say, well, white people have a disproportionate responsibility to solve this. And what that does is it kind of says, well, there's, I know black churches are segregated too, but white people really are the ones who have to act in order to desegregate them. We cannot say to the black churches, they need to desegregate as well. In fact, if you read Dr. Eric Mason's book, he kind of uh, talks about that and how, uh, how black churches shouldn't necessarily desegregate uh, just for desegregation's sake. But you don't hear the same thing going on for white people. No, they do have to desegregate for desegregation's sake. Um, and that's another white supremacist idea to say that, well, uh, it's really the white people's responsibility to solve this. <laughs> no, it's not. That's a white supremacist idea. Again, as if the white people, if they don't act, then nothing will ever get done. That's not true. That is not true. That's a white supremacist idea. Blacks and Puerto Ricans don't need white people to act in order to get things done. Absolutely not. They have the moral responsibility before God. They're made in the image of God, too. If, 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 if lack of diversity is something that's wrong in the church, then it's just as wrong for black churches as it is for white churches. Right? I mean, ha have I got that right? Or are we showing partiality here, too? You see, this is the thing. Social justice warriors often will, will, will support things that look really good. But really, they're not really good. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. God bless. So there it is. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> I actually checked. I, I recorded that video on Monday. And this, these comments were Wednesday. So it was two days before uh, I, I'm a prophet. I am a prophet. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found that helpful. There was some extra content at the end of that as well. Um, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go um, back to YouTube to see what my white overlords want me to say today. I'm going to explain why I mainly read white male theologians. Need I say more? Here we go.